All right, we are live. Hello, everybody, to Alibaba.com audience, Helium 10 audience that's here. Um, we're gonna have a, a cool webinar. Um, the funny thing, you know, I always like to, you know, on our podcast too, we talk about funny things uh, as well and keeping it real. We, we came on here at the show and all three of us guests were wearing black. And so we're like, come on, man, you're wearing this other crazy color. You're trying to be different. And so she's like, you know, I have some FOMO. I'm going to go change to black right now. So, so here's our host of the show, uh, man, how's it going? Good. The black shirt looks good on you. That was fast. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, now. So good to have everyone on board. Thanks so much, Spelly, for hosting the show. <laughs> So how's every how is everyone doing today? We're good. good. Very good. Awesome. Excellent. So Chanel, you're calling in from New York? Yes, I'm actually in Philadelphia. Oh, nice. Very nice. How is the Philadelphia? Is it cold? I'm right pretty now? nice. That's good. good. I've been here for 10 years now. So well, I went to Penn State, so I used to go to Philadelphia all the time. Yeah. Oh so, wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um and then, is it is, is did you have chi um cheesesteak over there a lot? Uh, yeah, so I do. I'm a picky eater, so I don't get it with all the the extra toppings and stuff. <laughs> well, okay, and, enough talk about food. I'm on a diet, so like uh, it's already making my stom uh, my stomach uh, grumble here. <laughs> um, and Rich, you're calling in from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So Atlanta. What What's going on there? It's I heard it's like a cool place, um, like a trendy and cool place for the kids. Oh, I love Atlanta. It's like the new Hollywood right now. But oh, I mean, really? Right now we're dealing with. Uh, we wake up, we put on a whole sweater, sweatsuit, and then by 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 lunchtime we, we're walking out with shorts and a tank top. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome! And I know Bradley is calling in from South California, right? And then it's like a storming there. Yeah, this is like very strange. Like it was in the forties this morning and, and <clears throat> raining like all night. This is like completely not typical San Diego weather. I don't know what's going on. That's, yeah. That's, that's very, very weird. And I'm calling in from um, Scottsdale, Arizona, and it's sunny as always. So um, before we get started in 10 minutes, I would love to hear some interesting stories. Um, so Chanel, um, I know you own so many business and you're also a coach. Mm -hmm. um, for moms, like I'm a mom, um, you are the founder for Millionaire Moms Club. So what do you tell us about it? And what do you usually coach the moms? Um, yeah, so I've been, I've had the Millionaire Moms Club for going on three years now. And um, so moms have been reaching out to me over and over asking, like, how do you run businesses with kids? A lot of single moms, a lot of moms that don't have like disposable incomes and things of that nature. Um, so they're trying to figure out how they can start a business and what businesses are kind of like mom friendly. Right. Because mm -hmm. um, we may not have 12 hours a day to work on our businesses and things like that. Um, so I kind of guide them and give them a blueprint on what type of businesses they can start. A lot of them have online shops. A lot of them do drop shipping and things of that nature, kind of businesses that you can just kind of plug and play. You don't have to physically work um, to make money. And that's the goal to get all my students, all my mentees to get to the point where they're not exchanging their time for money so that they're able to eventually leave their nine to fives and be home with their kids full time, but still have an income on the side. So that's our main mission. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, I, I totally get it. Um, it's kind of challenging sometimes with the times and, you know, need some more flexibility. And it's the new geek economy, right? The sharing mm -hmm. your time and doing something whenever you want. So um, I think, um, Bradley, you work with a lot of Amazon sellers. And, you know, the Amazon sellers, it's just like they just stay behind their computers and do whatever they want. It's kind of similar, right? Yeah, it's like I mean I think people people want independence and and they don't want to work for the man, you know. I I don't like working for the man from before. I used to work for like food companies and stuff, and and so that was what first attracted me to to, to sell on Amazon because it's one of the the best ways to be able to to kind of like start your own business and instantly have like this wide audience. And so I deal with with people all the time who it's amazing to hear their stories. You know, they might have just you know they're working you know tw uh, 20 uh, 20 hours every couple of days you know like 80 hours a week and 
and they just like, hey, I'm going to try this online thing. And then they go to Alibaba.com, find a product, you know, put a couple thousand dollars in, and then they just grow it over time. You know, some people grow fast, you know, like people, uh, I know somebody who found a product on Alibaba.com and within a couple months was doing $40,000 a month. Other people, they just do it kind of like as a side hustle. But the point is, is like when you're, when you're your own boss and you're selling your own things, like you control, how, you know, how you want to live and, so it's like it's it's kind of like a freedom, I guess, to a lot of people out there. So it's it's really uh really cool to see people's success. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think what we usually focus on are small, medium business, and a lot of them start with a gig, right? A side hustle, and they eventually they will hustle into very successful entrepreneur and, and, and business owners like Rich. Um, and you started as a graphic designer when you were like really young, right? Right. Uh, I started when I was about 13, 14 years old. You know, I had early access to a computer. So I got into the graphic design of things. Uh, I sold probably like my first graphic design was a, a nightclub ad. That was the first time I made $50 when I was about 13 or 14 years old. I can't remember. It was so far back. I'm 32 <laughs> now. But, you know, just getting in from that, I didn't know graphic design was take you such a long way, especially when it comes to like, you know, sourcing products and product development. There, there's so much that graphic design helps you whenever it comes to the e-commerce space. So, you know, I, I can get really deep about it, but, you know, we could probably save that for a few minutes. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I started from at a young age and hats off to Chanel because when I really got deep into e-commerce, uh, I was a stay at home dad. So I, I love what oh, she's doing. You're a dad, too? Yeah, I got two kids. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that's awesome. And I know Bradley have kids, too, right? How many do you have? Uh, I have two kids. Two kids. And well. I met with um, well, your, uh, your daughter, who speaks Chinese, too, which is very yeah, awesome. Wow. You speak Japanese. And, like, what else do you speak? Uh, I only, I mean, I speak English and Spanish, mainly. Okay. I, I used to speak Japanese, but my, my brain is not big enough. So when I learn Spanish, like, I would learn a word of Spanish, and I would forget a word of Japanese. And then I'm half Filipino, so like I, uh, I, I try to speak some Tagalog, but mainly English and Spanish are my languages. And um, so Chanel Rich, last time I met with Bradley, it was at Helium 10's um, Cell and Scale Summit. And um, Bradley was actually the instructor for Zumba class. <laughs> and I, it was like 7 a.m. in the morning, and um, my colleague Jess and I, we promised we would go, but it was just too early, and I... <laughs> yeah, I, I, but hey, you know, like I can understand not, not, you know, being in Vegas and not wanting to wake up at seven. But there was like fifty people who still came, and I thought you were my friends, but like I guess we weren't that tight. Yeah, I, we weren't I that close. The, the big boss from like Amazon, or Walmart, um, showed up as well to support you. <laughs> yep. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, maybe next time we just do an online um, Zumba and invite you to host. I'm good. <laughs> So, um, so Chanel, um, coming back to you. So what hobbies do you have as a owner for multiple business? And also, you know, you coach, um, moms as well. What do you do to help you, uh, manage stress and pressure in life or work? Mm -hmm. So I absolutely love doing yoga. So I try to do yoga three times a week. I also try to go to the gym a few times a week. Um, I don't really like going to the gym, but it does help uh, relieve stress. But I really, really do like uh, yoga. That's awesome. What about you, Rich? Oh, man. Y'all putting me on the spot. I have a full gym in the house. I got, you know, I got a squad rag. I got a trimmer. I got everything. And then, oh you no, know, I'll probably work out like three, four times out of the week. But it's like, yeah. when I get lazy, I have zero excuses. So I try my best. <laughs> awesome. Um, and I initially, when I saw your background, I thought it was a gym. Um, <laughs> gonna go there and do some push ups. Um, we actually have a lot of buyers on Alibaba.com. They are um, like a gym chains, and one of them, they, they are doing like a um, X, they store X. It's like a national chain in US and California. Another one, they do like a gym chain, and they buy everything equipment, um, supplies, and t shirts. and you know, apparels and, and all that as well. So it's really interesting that when I talk to customers, I see all these interesting stories. Um, so I think we have five more minutes before our official start. Um, I think um, we, it just hopefully everyone can share kind of interesting story uh, of your failure. Um, so usually, you know, people see you as very successful, but I'm 
100% sure you have been through some challenges um, and mistakes in, in your um, career. So, you know, I will start with maybe Bradley, you want to start? I, you know, I've done so many things. We'll talk about that in the formal introduction, but like share some stories, like how you come, come through a mistake or failure. Well, yeah, I, um, like I said, you know, I, I didn't like working for the man. And so that, that having to do that almost was a failure in itself. And then I was, when I first tried to get into entrepreneurship, when I was like, probably like 1920, um, it was during the first Fast and Furious, that I'm aging myself, but that was when like when the first Fast and Furious movies came out and I was totally into that whole scene about the, the car parts and stuff. And I was working for this Korean company. But then when, the, when there was like this kind of recession, people weren't buying body kits and carbon fiber spoilers and stuff. And that business kind of failed. And then another time I failed was even when I was first getting into Amazon, we were um, we started dealing with like uh, hoverboards, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the, the ones that you, you kind of step on. Yeah. And and then all of a sudden, you know, when they started burning people's houses down, not, not ours, but then Amazon <laughs> banned it. And then like we had sold like in one week, like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth, which was crazy for us. That, that was like huge money. Yeah. yeah. But then Amazon just like refunded everybody who we had sold to and every, whoever was selling hoverboards and um but they didn't even have the customer send their product back to us. So it was just like a hundred percent lost money. And so that was like a huge L that we took right there when, when we just lost six figures just because Amazon decided that hoverboards were not safe. So those, those are probably a couple of my big, uh, big L's that I took. Wow. Yeah. That is a very, um, very painful experience. So reach uh, your story. Uh, for sure. Uh, I mean, I definitely had some similar stories to Bradley. Like I, I was, uh, I was a real big private label seller at one point. You know, I, I've sold hoverboards in that phase too. And that's one of those big risks. It's just like fidget spinners. It's like, should I get in? Should I not? And then, uh, but we sold hoverboards primarily on eBay. We didn't have that big burn. But most of my L's just really came from doing one too many things. So it's like being a creator and being a creative. Like I jumped into videography. I've done everything in the design space. I've jumped into production and printing. Uh, business cards, flyers, brochures, you know, I had that business. I had, um, what else? You, you know, we did a lot of cinematography. We did a lot of commercials. I think it was at the point where I was so young, I didn't realize I had one too many talents and I was burning myself away by trying to do too many things instead of focusing on one. And then probably like when I landed on apparel, it, it probably took me a lot further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so Chanel, do you sell hoverboard as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do I actually don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so just one quick one maybe one and a half minute like some some kind of experience learning to share um so for me it was with my first business was a little boy's clothing line um so i went to college for fashion design so i figured i'm just gonna start this little boy's clothing line and i'm just gonna sew everything myself right i know how to sew um and that's the, the way i'm gonna go but i didn't think through um how burnt out i would get from making each garment myself and that I kind of set a ceiling for myself. So now I'm not able to scale. I'm only one person. Um, I can only make so many garments a day. Um, so that kind of put a limit on me. So, and not only that, I got tired of sewing. I used to love sewing and then I went from loving it to hating it. So I'm like, I need to figure something out. I need to get a manufacturer because I won't be able to keep going on like this. And even to this day, I, I hardly sew from, <laughs> from that experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely, you cannot do everything, right? You have to outsource some of the, you know, tasks. And um, and I, for a lot of the business owners, they focus on selling and marketing and branding. So sourcing is not really on top of their priorities. It's all, all, also take a lot of time. So hopefully we at Alibaba.com can help the buyers with some of the tasks and make it easier for them to focus on what they actually specialize in. So I think we have maybe... Um, Holding on one minute, we are starting in one minute. Um, so Jess, you want to just start the video? March Expo, Alibaba.com's annual month-long promotional event that offers new products and services from new trends and insights, where you can explore new opportunities, lower costs, and source with certainty. Be the first to access new product launches and get a sneak peek into the latest breakthrough products via live streams from 40 standout suppliers across 10 key industries. 
deep dive into over 200 leading innovation showcases and experience cutting edge production techniques through live streams and videos so you can bring your products to life via better and newer solutions. Hello and welcome to the Buyer Girls Academy. And this is the March Expo special edition. And from Alibaba.com's Buyer Team, I'm your host, Ming Yang. And today I'm super excited to host three special guests today. Um, and then um, the, today's the theme is helping small, medium business to be competitive and thrive in 2023. Um, so let me start with a quick uh, introduction for the guest. So let's start with Chanel. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Chanel Ashley, and I am the founder of the Millionaire Moms Club. I actually have a couple of businesses. So I have a little boys clothing line and event space and the Millionaire Moms Club, where I coach moms to grow their online stores to six and seven figures. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Rich, you want to do a quick introduction? Uh, for sure. My name is Rich. I'm an on entrepreneur, primarily in the apparel space. I have a cloning brand, After Hours. I have the consulting business side uh, for my personal brand, which is Hustle Ninjas and the YouTube channel. And I also have a few marketplace businesses and I have a big history of just e-commerce and just diving into entrepreneurship at a young age. Excellent. Thank you. Now we come to Bradley, our old friends. How are you doing, Bradley? Give us an um, introduction of your like core introduction, not like the the big career. <laughs> not my whole li uh, life story. <laughs> uh, my name is Bradley. For those who don't know, I, I work at Helium 10. I'm the director of training here. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur myself for, for over 20 years. And um, at Helium 10 is a software company where we help people uh, start selling on Amazon.com and Walmart.com. And it's really great to inspire a, a lot of people. And I get inspiration from all the great stories I hear of, of people who are really crushing it by selling online. Thank you so much. So all the guests today, they are serial and entrepreneurs, they're business coach, and they bring a lot of insights of industry and what's going on in the retail world. So we'll get to that. So also today is the opening day of the March Expo on Alibaba.com. So please click on the link in the, in the comment and check out our events. We have millions of newly released, released products, uh, 90 day guarantee of the lowest cost. And also a lot of suppliers are live streaming their showroom and production line. So this is really cool. Um, so we will share more details about the March Expo later. So let's get to our speakers. So I will start with Chanel. So the Millionaire um, Mom Clubs, that's super interesting. So I'm always curious. So what are the biggest pain points you hear from your um, students? So the biggest pain points I hear from my students is Number one, not having enough time, right? Because most of them are moms. So there's only so many hours in the day. Um, so they don't have enough time or don't feel like they have enough time to, to start a business, to grow a business. So they want some sort of blueprint that they can follow. And then they also don't have a lot of disposable income, right? So they want to know, all right, how do I know that this business, this online store is going to succeed? How do I know that these products I put in here are going to sell? So they want to know that if they invest their money, they're going to get a return on their investment because they don't really have um, a ton of money to, to just waste or burn on testing different things. So they want to make sure that they have a system set up and products that are actually going to sell in their stores. Definitely. So I totally agree. So making the product choice and choosing the right product to get into is very critical. So you are the expert on the subjects. How do you choose the product you want to launch? So for me, I try to make it really simple and ask my audience, right? I try to let my audience guide me, right? I have a specific target audience that I'm serving. Um, in this instance, for this business, I'm serving moms. I also have a little boy's clothing line. So that's specifically for little boys. So before I'm even launching the store, um, I'm growing my audience, right? I'm starting an Instagram page, I'm asking questions. Hey, do you guys like this style or this style to get feedback? So by the time I launch my store, now when I'm sourcing the products for it, I know like, okay, these are the types of products that my audience likes. These are the types of photos that they engage with the most. These products are trending on social media. And now mm -hmm. I kind of have like a checklist to go off of instead of me just saying, all right, I think they'll like this bow tie. I think they'll like this shirt. So I'm going to throw it in the store and see what happens or try to push it out to them when I'd rather just attract my target audience, see what they want, where the holes are in the market, 
where their pain points are and then provide that for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So that's a really good suggestion. So, um, so Rich, I'll come to you for the same question. So you launched your own brand and product line. Um, so how do you choose your product ideas? For sure. So, I mean, like when it comes to that, it, it has to do with a lot of product research. A lot of people come on here, especially in the apparel space, selling what people think are popular, what they like themselves. Like, you know, if it was up to me or I guess anybody on this panel, we would have all sold like a black T-shirt. But not everybody likes just solid black. And Bradley could tell you more about this. When it comes to product research, you know, you can go on any type of marketplace and they have data of what people are actually purchasing. So, you know, just basing like what your design and what your product is going to be based off of data is going to take you a whole lot further by doing product research. A lot of these big box retailers aren't printing thousands of t-shirts without doing the product research first. So most of the pain points just come from uh, most most new business owners trying to design a product or a piece of apparel based on what they think is popular. Yeah, definitely. I agree. So Bradley, so now um, you work with Helium 10 and it's sort of such a great tool suite for a lot of things. And one of them is product research. So Tell us, like, how would you advise the, especially new users or new starters to use your tool to do product research? Yeah, it's so, it's so important what, what Rich was saying is, is following the data. You know, like, it's not like, you know, if you're become a blogger or a TikToker or something like that, you should follow your passion, you know, like, and, and that's how you'll be successful. But when you're trying to sell on online marketplaces, it's not always about your passion, but you have to go where the, there's high demand, but low competition. You know, you could find something that's, you know, looks like people are making millions on Amazon or on Walmart or something like that, but it's saturated uh, and it's, you know, there's too much competition. You're not going to have success. So it's a, 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 a kind of like weighing the, the two things of trying to find the demand and then where there's holes in the competition. So like, for example, in Helium 10, we have a tool uh, that's called Black Box. And so I would go in there. I found so many products that I, I actually currently sell myself on Amazon using this method where I go and like, hey, show me. I'll, I'll be like, hey, Helium 10, show me a keyword that's searched for at least 5,000 times a month. But at the same time, the, the search results, like most of them have like less than 100 reviews or maybe most of them aren't using their images correctly or, or kind of signs that there is room for me to like get in there and steal some of their sales. You can't just like hop in and go to the Amazon bestseller list and say, hey, all right, I'm going to see what these top sellers are. I'm just going to go ahead and, and stick my label on something like this, and I'm going to make a million dollars myself. That's Maybe you could have done that like five, six years mm -hmm. ago. Open, but mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think online retail is to combine your passion with your data-driven decisions, right? So that really help yep. you choose the right products. So once um, you decide what you want to sell, you think you don't have even evidence it's going to sell well, how do you go about finding the manufacturers or suppliers who can help you make it? So well, you still talking to me? Or Yes, yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, that, that's a no brainer. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, We use Alibaba.com. People have been using, you know, so we have tens of thousands of customers and probably I would say the majority of them, the way they found their first suppliers was using uh, Alibaba.com. And uh, the, the the important thing is that you go to different countries for different uh, you know specialties. Like for example, almost 100% of my products, or maybe 90% of my products, are manufactured in China. And of course, Alibaba.com is great for that. But then you know sometimes there's different specialties in some countries. Like in Mexico, the, maybe it's better if you're you're going to do a ceramic product. Maybe you should source it from Mexico. Um, you know, maybe if you're doing some special kinds of textiles, you know, perhaps um, actually Pakistan might be better uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to find a, a supplier. And then Vietnam, there, there's also some some great suppliers. And the cool thing about, you know, using Alibaba.com is you, you can filter out for whatever, whatever country you want. But that's that's like one of the most important aspects that people shouldn't rush to mm -hmm. is finding the right supplier. And it's not just, oh, just go to Alibaba.com and find the the, the first supplier that shows up in your in your feed. No, you got to like really know how to negotiate with them and and you know get samples and do your due diligence and homework before you you choose the supplier you're going to go with. Yeah, I can't agree more. Um, a lot of times, especially for 
new startups. Um, they think they come to Alibaba.com and with one click or a few clicks, they can find the perfect supplier. But that's just not um, the case, right? You takes, it takes time to learn. You, you need to understand your own core products and concepts and you look for the supplier who can make the things for you. So um, Rich, how do you usually go about finding the supplier for your business? Yeah, I mean, we're really straightforward about it. Like, we even type in words like we're not even familiar with. Like, I know uh, last season, like the raw hem hoodies were popular on the on like uh, the very bottom, like the cutoff hoodies. We didn't even know what to type in, so we just type in cutoff hoodies and we reach out to each and every single supplier. And we've realized like uh, some suppliers they leave their um, video chat. Uh, icon available so like we even sit there and click on chat so that we can get like uh, communication back and forth like in real time like um i even want to go a step uh further it's like that's the same way we also sell because like ali on alibaba.com they a lot of these suppliers have like live events and if we see a particular product that we like then we'll sit there and ask questions about it and for the marketing aspect to to someone else who may be purchasing from a supplier, um, that's the power of going live. You can showcase a product just like the same mm -hmm. way that you are whenever you're purchasing from a supplier. So just being able to communicate in real time and seeing that if that's something that you're looking for and getting your questions asked, that's pretty much how we go about it. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, before the COVID, everybody goes and travels and meet with suppliers and see their showrooms and production. But during the COVID, um, the travel was really hard. So, and thanks for mentioning we the new features we um, have on the platform and also on the app, um, the live streaming from the suppliers. We have video and conference calls and, you know, chatting functions. So, so yeah, so, you know, we design a lot of features to make it easier for the buyers to con communicate with the supplier. Um, so coming to you, Chanel, um, so how do you usually work with the suppliers and, um, you know, how do you choose suppliers? Um, what are, you know, the things you look at when you're choosing suppliers? All right. So mine is going to be pretty similar to um, both Rich and Bradley, um, but a little bit different because I also look for manufacturers on Alibaba, right? So I'm looking for um, suppliers for my ready-to-made garments and everything like that that I'm going to sell, like this hoodie right here. Um, so for those, I'm just typing in exactly what I want, uh, similar to Rich, seeing what suppliers come up. Um, I'm always filtering for verified suppliers and suppliers with trade assurance um, just to make the process a little bit easier for myself. And then I'm reaching out to them, right? I'm letting them know exactly what I'm looking for, looking at their, their minimum order quality, making sure that they, um, they meet all my requirements and going back and forth with them, ordering samples. And then from there, I'm able to narrow it down, right? Okay, I like this about this uh, manufacturer. I like this about this one. And then for the ones that actually need to make something customized, now we have to get into, I'm sending them specs. I'm sending them pictures of a garment that I designed and saying, hey, I saw you have this button down shirt that's similar. I designed this one. Is this something that you can recreate? And again, we're going back and forth communicating. Um, sometimes we'll do video chat and things like that, but just trying to be as transparent as possible and communicating as much as possible. If I can send measurements and specs, I do that um, as well, just to make the process easier for both of us. And then for that, again, I will order the samples, see how I like the samples, we'll tweak some stuff and we'll move forward from there. But the process is pretty um, similar for both. Yeah, definitely. It takes time to learn all the tools and, you know, features and search and RFQ, et cetera. So um, hopefully we'll uh, offer more content and educational content for the buyers to use. Um, so I think we're, um, we want to look at 2023, right? The online retail is changing. The social media is coming out. Um, and like the best selling items um, from two years ago is not best selling anymore. There are always new things coming. Um, so Bradley, I'll come to you because you um, do a lot of analytics with the Hillington tool and product research and was trendy and, and all. So um, like you even have a best selling, like a spooky bookshelf, right? In the home and gardens category. So, you know, I don't know if the rest of the speakers seen that. It's pretty funny. Um, and Bradley use that as example all the time. It's very funny. And I think people buy all year round, not just the hollow. hollow. Uh, here you go. Oh, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's like a best selling coffin on Amazon, I would say. Um, so, so yeah. So what's, um, what do you think um, it's, 
that's going on in Amazon world, like in 2023, right? So what people are talking about, what's online retail? Yeah, so share some of your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I know you're going to be, you know, showing some 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 stats on like essential versus non-essential, but that's actually something interesting that's going on. Like uh, one thing that we look at at Helium 10 is the search volume, the estimated number of times people are searching certain keywords. And, and then if you would drill down into different categories, like let's just take the home and garden category. Um, what if, if you look at like in February of last year, which search terms for that category had the most search volume and then compare it to like this, the last couple of weeks, you would see that words like uh, are still in there, like shower curtain, office, a chair, and then and then some a couple of pet related ones that kind of fall into that category. But then the other the other you know four or five or six out of the top ten are kind of different. Like the ones that were there last year, um, like one of them was a search term was bathroom accessories and air fryer. Those like dropped out. So like bathroom accessories, like you know a lot of those are kind of like you know, maybe some decor stuff. So maybe you know people with a little bit tighter wallets, they're they're not buying a lot of this stuff that maybe is not really that necessary. Like so, certain kind of decor things or or fancier mini appliances like air air fryers and things so that's an interesting trend just to see that yeah and even actually even our coffin shelf is not it's not selling as, as much as it did in the past so it's interesting at least for the home and garden category people are not getting these kind of like fluffy things as much it's not like completely dead or anything like that but they're just not getting it as much as the last couple of years mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. And um, yes, you're right. So today we're also going to show um, and share the insights from the Alibaba.com's 2023 sourcing strategy for um, SMBs. And it is the highly anticipated report that gives insight into what's trending and the themes can really be be expected across the industry and sourcing and supply chain. And um, so we did a lot of research with uh, the Alibaba.com data and um, we have seen some consumer spending shrinking across general market over the last year. 50% um, of the people say they are holding back on non-essential spending, which includes apparel categories. In uh, apparel categories, we are seeing a year-to-year -year growth of 10%, under 10%, which is below the average. Comparing to some like construction, auto parts, they are year-to-year -year growth is like 70%. So, um, but under apparel, we can also see some special keywords or categories actually fast. Um, for example, the casual clothing, right? So that's what's actually growing really fast. So um, I want Chanel and Rich, you guys run apparel business um, as a business owners. So what kind of um, trending words do you see or um, how do you adjust to this kind of change of the preference from the consumer space? I mean, there's always going to be change in it. Like when it comes to casual, like we found like the tapestry hoodies was popular last season. We found five inch shorts was popular uh, this, the uh, last summer. And it's just kind of knowing what foundation you want to print on. But just to be able to take advantage of like the ups and downs, like is being able to take it's always the name of the game is always going to be data and not necessarily just product research data, but having email and SMS that way you have a foundation to all of this. And that's why it's important that whenever you sell on your own website, even if like, you know, you're at a down point, whenever these products aren't selling as much, um, you really want to sell at a point where you're at least acquiring a customer, a new customer at the least for these actual particular products. And then you can go a lot further with, with just that alone. So, you know, and, you know, just in speaks with trends, you know, it's not even really about being a step ahead. Sometimes it's just knowing which part of the timeline that we're in, because most of the time with fashion, uh, mm -hmm. we're just pretty much going back in time. Like um, drop shoulder tees are back popular, baggy clothes are back popular. And it, it's just a lot of recycled things. So it, it, it's, it, it's going a step, uh, being able to be a step ahead, but just knowing which part of the timeline that we are in. Yeah, definitely. And also um, kind of, what's trending on social media, right? Like TikTok, like the Amazon yoga pants, things like that will actually really take you to like a top one selling spot. But that may go down tomorrow with different keywords. So especially in fashion, everything's just changing and moving. 
And when you build your own brand, some product design, some products, you need to make sure they're in stock, they're ready to sell. Um, how do you respond to this just, just fast growing and trending on social media and make sure you respond fast and manage your um, purchase, right? Now, inventory strategies, purchase strategy, not overstock and also make sure you have the stock in place. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like the apparel game is always going to be fast paced. That's why I like I know the supplier that you're bringing on. They they have one product that we we focus on a lot, which is just like a dye sublimation blank, but it's unique in general. And then like we can carry the rest of it, like because I'm pretty sure Bradley can tell you like when it comes to the trends of like a marketplace, most apparel. Uh, products that are popular that people can hop on are going to be like graphic design tees whenever you can change yourself. So like one product we focus on a lot is going to be like a, a sublimation blank that's unique, but at the same time, it can be customized once it, we, we receive it in our hands. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Definitely. Bradley, would you agree to that? Yeah, like like you were saying, it. It's the, the apparel is, is so fast moving, uh, even on Amazon, you know, like, mm -hmm. like things can go viral on TikTok, I knew of, um, there's a seller, uh, her name is, um, Elizabeth and, and she saw last year something, I forgot what it was. It, I don't think it was leggings. I don't even know if I know what it is, but, but it was something that went viral on TikTok, and she was able to like move fastly on it. And she did something like $3 million in, in like three months, you know, uh, wow. because she was able to be one of the first ones to actually be able to launch it to the market. But then just as fast as it, it ramped up, it, it kind of like, you know, tapered off. And so, like you said, it's, it's kind of like, hard to, 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 to gauge it. But then like when you do, like Rich was saying, where, where you bring in something that's not just going, you know, like you can bring in the material or a certain design, but then you're doing some customization. Well, if the trend changes, then you, you can, you, you can change, you know, you can change with that. And it's not like you have to throw away everything because it's completely useless now. So that that's definitely a plus what he was saying there. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, so Chanel, um, how do you, decide if you know you're going with the trends or um you make some adjustment to it um so pretty similar so i try to keep a good pulse on like what's trending on things like tiktok and instagram because things move so fast right and then to keep a good pulse on what's trending this month and what trends will die down fast and what trends are are here to stay or where the cycle is of a trend. So if you can catch a trend in the beginning, then that might be something that I may try to hop on if I see some longevity in it. Mm -hmm. If I see it being a super short-term trend, then I may um, just leave it alone and things mm -hmm. like that. But for me, I want to make sure that um, I'm staying current with what's up there, but I'm not necessarily buying things that are going to be here today and gone tomorrow. And one easy way that I, one easy thing that I like to do for my audience is if I see a trend that I'm thinking about hopping on, I think it may have longevity, then I, I'll find a supplier that can get it to me pretty quickly, right? But I'll do a, a pre-order, a pre-sale. So I'll put the, the template on my website. I'll say, hey guys, you can order these pants, the, the trending TikTok pants, whatever are trending. I'll see how many pre-orders we get. If we sell out, then cool, let's move forward with them. If my audience is like, uh, we're over that, we already got it, then you know, that's something that I won't waste my time and energy on but that's kind of a good way that i'm able to gauge and then i don't have to risk making a large investment because they're they're paying for the goods right so now i know okay i can order 1500 of these i can order 2000 of these and it's already paid for mm -hmm. yeah definitely and you have one of the um product lines which is the for the kids right boys clothing mm -hmm. line, and you build that line and um you are not really kind of seeing what other people are selling but you think you see the value in there you see the demand in it so you differentiate yourself from the market so tell right. us about that brand and how you kind of build your own product line that's very different in the market yeah so for that one um it's just a matter of finding holes in the market right because where there's holes there's opportunities so after i had my son in 2014 i'm going around shopping for baby clothes for special occasions and things like that so like for easter christmas all those different occasions that you want to you want to dress your kids up right and the girls section was always huge there was a ton of dresses and things like that and then when it came to the boys section it was always boring they were just regular plain black suits right and again, I went to my Instagram, I went to my audience and I said, hey, um, how do you guys feel about shopping for boys special occasion clothes? And the moms had the same problem as me. They're boring. There's no variety. The girls get all the cute stuff. They don't care about the boys. So I'm like, 
light bulb, this is an opportunity. So it's not just me that feels like that. So that gave me the, the idea to come up with different bow ties, different blazers and different button down shirts that really stood out. So now I don't necessarily have to worry about following a trend per se. I can look at what fabrics are good, what prints are trending and things like that. Um, but if the trend switches to casual or comfy, I don't necessarily have to all of a sudden come out with a, a casual line, right? Because that's not my my brand. Mm -hmm. My brand is differentiated in this way. We're filling this hole and that's where we um, stand, but definitely looking for holes in the market because mm -hmm. those always equal opportunities. Yeah, definitely. So that's um, actually speaks to one of our research fundings as well. So for non-essential categories. Um, so one of the strategies we advise a small business is to build product differentiation, right? You build your own brand, you find your market um, gap, like you mentioned, the gap, um, and then you fill that gap. And that's really one of the ways to, to survive and even succeed really well in this space. Um, so I want, uh, I would love for the reach to, to share how do you, when you're building branding and choose your product, like how do you try to differentiate yourself as well? At the end of the day, the differentiator becomes all a part of the marketing. It's not like about what you sell, it's how you sell it. And a lot of the things that we like to do is like group our audience, our customer base into like a Facebook group or a Discord so that they have a virtual place for them to hang out. Like mm -hmm. imagine if like, you know, we try to put out a sustainable product and we started working with uh, recycled uh, polyester and whatnot. And then we started charging a little bit more and we just post on our website. Um, that helps. Like we're differentiating ourselves, like trying to be like more economically friendly for the world. But like whenever they just see that, it doesn't really help. But when we have a space for them that we can communicate and we go live in our Facebook group, our private Facebook group, where it's everyone that's a part of our actual audience, we explain to them what we're doing and why it costs them a few dollars more than they're all a part of it. So at the end of the day, it's more than just, you know, putting out a product. It's all about building a community for your actual brand. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then um, really understand what your customers are looking for and then get feedback from them. Um, sure. You know, I um, so Bradley knows this, but, um, but I have um, I've passed small pets. And, you know, this year is really weird. We have coyotes around like biting them. Um, so I'm thinking like I'm going to design a clothesline for the dogs and with the sharp needles on it. So when they bite your dog, they will like, you know, just. Um, and I look on Amazon, actually, people are selling those already. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, um, sometimes it's hard to find the needs. So instead of just looking for something like really new, new, but like really understand what people are looking for and, you know, use the tools to analyze those data. Um, and, and in fashion, I think like Bradley, correct me if I'm wrong, like on Amazon, even Amazon have their own private label brands on um, you know, fashion line, and they also have like a designer clothes, like from premium designer clothes to like a fast fashion, right? So today there are a lot of fast fashion brands as well. So, so would you think, like, how do you see that um, the, in this category, what's going to work out better in this kind of inflation pot potential possible recession? Would people downgrade their spending and look for more casual or less expensive clothesline or, you know, what's going to happen? I would love to hear um, the expert opinions. Yeah, it, it, it depends. You, you can go either way. And so what, what you had talked about earlier about differentiation, that's one of the things that kind of like makes you recession proof. But mm -hmm. if you're, if you're, if you have something non-essential, you could still crush it online because there's always going to be a market for a, or a sub niche for you know even unique products like coffin shelves or or certain apparel or whatever the case is maybe it's not the highest search but you focus your marketing on that target audience a little bit more as opposed to just trying to throw a wider net like you can when just everybody's shopping online just throw a wide net and then catch all kinds of like uh, impulse sale, sales you're, you're not going to get a lot of impulse buys when when people are are keeping like a little bit tighter control over their wallets Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like you, we had said, differentiating yourself, like looking at what people complained about other competitors' products and then fixing that and then showing it. But then I, I always tell people too, don't always feel uh, when, when, when competition is getting tighter or it's harder to get sales that lowering the price or trying to compete with Amazon, for example, like Amazon brands is always like the way to go. You know, sometimes raising the price is the way to go. I know of one seller, um, Ann, 
And and she's actually in like the baby category, like baby apparel and other things. And her goal for every product she launches, she actually puts herself as the highest price. Now she's got very high quality products, so that's of course you know important to have high quality. You can't charge a high price if it's lower quality. But there are certain categories and sub niches where the the perception is is more important. Like for for baby products, you don't want to be like. Oh, I'm a cheap parent. You know, I'm gonna get the, these these cheap things. I'm gonna save money and then give my kid like this thing that might break or something. No, you're like, hey, I, I'm looking for the best for for my kids or or people who are really, you know, like yourself who are really, uh, you know, really take care of their their dogs. Like, I, I want to look for the best. So like, you actually can have a niche for yourself if you try and market yourself as the one of the 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 kind of highest uh, price mm -hmm. one. So there's, there, you can go both ways and there's not like one right or wrong way, but you just got to be able to move with the market and, and double down on what's working for you. Yes, definitely. Do you see that the same um, in different categories as well, like home and apparel, home goods, guard, home garden, etc. Very... Yeah, not. Uh, I would say in apparel and then like baby and pet products is where you see it the most, where people kind of like really find great, uh, kind of niches uh, mm -hmm. by going the high price, uh, 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 the high price way. When it comes to like a lot of generic, you know, household goods that maybe are not as kind of like showy or it's not as much of a status symbol and stuff, like that's where it's kind of harder to go like the, the, the high price. And so yeah. if you're not able to keep good profit margins at the lower price, mm -hmm. you might have a, a kind of harder time, you know, uh, in some of those uh, subcategories. Yeah, that's that's very interesting because um, our research find the babies and pets products actually are essential products, but adults apparel are not. So I guess the babies and pets are more important than us. <laughs> so Chanel, um, so what do you think it's happening in the fashion world? Like the premium brands, you know, the designer clothing or fast fashion. So how uh, what's what do you see the trends and consumer behavior? Um, so as far as the trends, I feel like things are becoming a lot more um, comfortable, right? In 2020, when everything shut down, we were home for a long time. People started working from home, um, and that lasted for an extended period of time, right? So we got used to, to being in sweatpants, to being in hoodies. We got used to being comfortable. We got used to working from home, and that translated into our apparel. But now, even though the world has opened back up, essentially, um, people, they, they figured out they really like being comfortable still, right? So even now that they're going back into the world and a lot of people still are working from home, they're still shopping a similar way. They're like, I want apparel that's comfortable, um, but that's also stylish, right? So I want, I may want a cute set, right? I may want cute loungewear um, and things like that. So I've been seeing that um, trending more and more. And then you see like the big brands like skims and things like that, that have uh, made a ton of money off of loungewear. And you see a lot of brands following in that footstep um, because it has become the trend. People are looking to be stylish and comfortable, whether they're in the house, whether they're out the house, whether they're traveling. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. I am switching my apparel choices from like a super official and formal to like very casual. Um, as well, just like what you said, um, and I have like maybe a black here and I have like a, you know, pajamas pants, <laughs> so, <laughs> because, you know, it's all digitalized. Um, so, and all of you guys, like a, a business coach, you help other people. And I know Rich, you have coached like over a hundred thousand students, you know, in doing business and all that. Um, so, you know, for 2023, what, uh, how do you help your students prepare for the potential, you know, inflation, recession? Um, you know, what kind of strategies do you advise them? I wouldn't necessarily say 100,000 students might. Yeah, I might probably have like 200,000 subscribers, but like students in general probably have like over 4,000 students. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah, but, but at the end of the day, it's really data like marketplace. If you're selling on a marketplace, there's two there's two business models. If you sell direct to consumer in the apparel space, like if you sell a marketplace, it's all about your graphic tees. It's all about doing research on which which designs are training, which phrases and all of that. And it's really fast paced. But with that alone, you really have to jump on it quick as soon as they come. You know, you can use tools. You can use tools like Helium 10. You can use a free tool like Google Trends. See what's really popular, right? But you got to be really on it. But at the end of the day, you really have to uh, create a, uh, 
a customer base, a, fa- a foundation. So you want to sell on your own website. You want to create data that's your own, your own true customers. Because like on a marketplace, at the end of the day, you know, that's not your customer. That's Amazon's customers. You want something that you can retarget. You want to uh, create that community where you can get in contact with them uh, via Facebook or on Instagram if you're going live. And, you know, even like we have a lot of ups and downs in this industry. But like whenever the downs come, you want to make sure you're able to talk to your direct customers. So just having your own customer database is going to go a lot further than, you know, just just trying to wing things across the way. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, have direct access to customers, direct to consumer. It's definitely very critical. And we had uh, another speaker before and he sells, Steve, he sells uh, bedding products and you know, you were saying people are just buying for one time. His customers actually repeat customers. I just don't get why. But, you know, having that loyal base, you can help you turn into, uh, you know, increase your lifetime value of the customers, right? So, um, and Rally, um, so you coach business and, you know, seven-figure sellers all the time. Um, so how would you advise people, um, you know, today in this new economic situation and even Jeff Bezos said, right, you need to hold your hold tight to your spending and, you know, be diligent. So how do you advise them? Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, it's not just consumers who, who are, you know, getting tighter with their wallets and stuff, but, but sellers have to uh, do that as well. Business owners, you know, like, you know, maybe you're, you're so profitable before that you could kind of, you know, hire staff that you really didn't need and and have you know a million subscriptions to things that you really didn't need but uh, it's getting more competitive you know because of the economy but also because costs are rising you know, like the cost to advertise on amazon is you know for some people it's skyrocketing you know compared to a couple of years ago and and it is it is important to advertise on amazon sometimes you know you, you can't even get you know, where you need to go if you're not, you know, investing in the advertising, you know, shipping costs, you know, keep going up, storage costs are going up, you know, even storage at Amazon is going up. And so what sellers and, you know, I, I tell people and, and what, you know, they tell me of what they're doing and I've had to do myself because, you know, I run my own Amazon stores too, is, is that we got to see where costs can be cut, you know, without cutting the important things, which is you should never cut quality. You should never cut customer service. You know, you should never you know, cut, you know, the, the kind of like product imaging and things like that. So it's like finding out how to save money and all right, well, Hey, you know, is, can I use automation? You know, is there something that maybe I was doing with my time because time is money too, that I can like maybe outsource, you know, to somebody who's, who, who is, you know, making less than I am as, as a business owner. Uh, is there something I can have AI, you know, do that's all the rage these, these days is, is like utilizing chat GPT and different things to automate different processes. And of course, you know, using tools like helium tend to take over a lot of the manual stuff that you do. So that that's what has to be done now in 2023 is you got to be how you manage your business, you know, from a to Z, not just the, you know, on the product side, but how you manage the back end of your business is going to be critical uh, if you're, if you want to, you know, remain profitable. Yes, definitely. Um, I totally agree. And especially, you know, with today's technology, it's a lot of things coming out, right? That, like you, you mentioned some of them. So streamline the process and operations and trying to be more efficient is very critical. Um, specifically regarding like Alibaba.com, because we help people with sourcing and we're trying to do you know, better and better and helping them save money and be more efficient and finding quality goods as well. So in terms of sourcing strategy, um, I would love for the speakers, all of the speakers to kind of um, share your strategy, how to stay competitive um, by, you know, have a good sourcing strategy and, you know, buying materials, buying raw materials, buying products, working with suppliers, um, et cetera. So, um, Want to start? Bradley, want to start? Yeah. Well, one thing, one thing that um, I think is important that is kind of unique is is I mean, all all the standard how to you know negotiate with suppliers that mm-hmm. that's that's evergreen that people are always need to do that. But is putting yourself in unique situations, mm-hmm. and so one thing that can set you apart that you know makes makes you know you have less competition is like looking sometimes off of Amazon, not 
Maybe you're using Helium 10. Look outside of Helium 10. Look outside of Amazon for inspiration. You know, like looking on, you know, sometimes things on Etsy and Pinterest start selling and trending way before things are trending on Amazon. And another like kind of quick tip I have is when you're using Alibaba.com, let's say you're trying to source a product and then you find a factory and you're going to source that product. Something I suggest, always suggest people do is when, if you find a good supplier, go dig into their store on Alibaba.com or their, their storefront and then look at their other products. And nine times out of 10, when I do that, like I find a supplier that's really good and maybe I'm going to go with them, maybe I'm not. But by going into their back end of the store, I always discover like new things. I was like, oh, I didn't even know this existed. And then what I do is is now I take that and then I go to Amazon or I go to Helium 10 and then I say, hey, is this a thing? Like, are people actually searching for this? And a lot of times I'm able to catch on like trends and things and products that, you know, uh, you know, a factory in China or India developed that hasn't even hit yet. And so like, I'm not having to compete there. I can be for one of the first to the market of mm -hmm. something that people are searching for, but not, you know, 50 people uh, have and that I'm competing with. So that's like another way to kind of like make sure that you're a little bit ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. And it's all, you know, people think of Alibaba.com as only, Hey, uh, this is only where I'm going to find my sourcing and my supplier. I actually use Alibaba.com for product research as well in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely makes sense. And as you know, like some of the suppliers we have on Alibaba.com, they are actually very good market researchers. Wow. And they come to the U.S. and they go to the events and trade shows and they actually help our buyers, um, you know, advise on the buyers on what's going to happen. You know, one of the manufacturers I, um, I, I learned, um, they actually have a weekly brainstorming section. So they will come up with a new product idea that's in their KPI. So it's just like, oh my God, this manufacturer actually come up with all the new ideas, what they can do and they share with buyers. That's just so amazing. Um, so, so Chanel, so what about, how about you? So what is your, um, advice on the sourcing strategy, you know, for 2023? Um, so my advice on a sourcing strategy for 2023, um, so number one, having an audience that you can pull uh, data from, right? So you want to find a balance between finding what's trending and what's going to trend and surveying your audience or your target audience to find what they want. Um, and then somewhere in the middle is where you'll be able to, to source your products, right? Now you'll be able to go out and reach out to suppliers and things like that um, and get the items that you need. And I also am really big on attending uh, trade shows, either in person or online, because at a lot of these trade shows, they have like trending events, right? They'll tell you what's going to be trending for the fall. They'll tell you what's going to be trending for 2024 there's things that you can subscribe to um at least in the apparel industry that'll tell you what's going to be trending this season next season next year so you can also keep that uh top of mind as well and then like bradley was saying a lot of the the manufacturers and suppliers on alibaba they will let you know if you're looking at a certain style a lot of the suppliers that i talk to they'll say hey you should also check out um this one or hey you should also check out this product to complement that and I'll look at it, and if it makes sense, sometimes it's like, oh, that does really make sense. Let me add that um, as well, because my audience would love that. It complements this product perfectly, or I could see that that will be trending soon or something of that nature. But just keeping a good balance on what's going to be trending by looking at social media, the trade shows, things like that, and surveying, surveying your audience at all times has really yeah. been helpful. Definitely, definitely. So, um, so for March Expo, which is opening today, um, we are showing millions of newly released products. So definitely make sure you click on the main page and check it out. And maybe there's some inspiration on the website. So, um, so Rich, I think um, one more last advice from the sourcing strategy. Uh, for sure. So I can give you an advanced question. So, um, Whenever you're like working with suppliers, you can you can ask them and say what's what's popular and whatnot, and then they will let you know. But sometimes this comes from the mass majority, and sometimes you want to ask like what's what's popular coming from a few buyers of yours. And sometimes some of these buyers are far more ahead than mm -hmm. uh, the, than the mass majority. And then you can look at this actual product, and then you can take that same data and go to a marketplace and see what's so hot about this particular item, and it's not as many sellers on this. So that's how you can get that competitive competitive edge on top of everything 
Yeah, definitely makes sense.、Um, a lot of the buyers they are like partners with the suppliers. They send, you know, they talk all the time. So you know, getting insights and you know experience from them definitely makes sense. So、um, thank you. That's great advice from all the business coaches.、Uh, and now I have a surprise for our audience, and we are super excited to welcome、um, a supplier calling in from China. Hi guys. <laughs> How's it going? Thank you so much for joining us.、Um, it's 4 a.m. your time, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, a good early morning. Now it's almost four o'clock, but it's, it's a good time. <laughs> it's a really good time. So you guys here, and、I、just have a quickly.、Um, uh, this is just is is interesting to me. You are discussing how to how to sourcing、uh, a supply or rubber store, but but by my side, I always learn how to be show myself to to buyers. So it's really interesting to、uh, to me. Yeah, yes, definitely.、Um, and then、um, Katie is the CEO of Jiangxi Gift Inn,、um, a company that specializes in manufacturing uniform apparel and printing, and a lot of products. And Katie will share、uh, show us in a minute.、Um, and also, Katie is coming from、um, Jiangxi Province, right? Jiangxi Province yes, and.、Uh, Yeah, which city you coming from? We're calling Nanchang, Nanchang city, Nanchang. the capital of Jiangxi yeah. province. Yeah,、oh. yeah, yeah. Not so many people know know our city. I think some of the audience may know because、um, Nanchang is like an industry belt for some special、uh, apparel products, right? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of based off the、uh, knitting wear. Oh、China. wow. It's excellent,、um, and I, I know I don't know if this, our guest today you have been to Asia or China or any anyone. I know Bradley definitely been to Asia so many times, right? Yeah, I haven't. I haven't been to China. I'm actually going to Japan for three weeks in a couple of weeks, and and I've been all over Asia. I've been to a few country or a few countries, a few cities in、mm-hmm. in China, but it's been years、um, yes. since I've been yes, to China. So I look forward to yeah, I look forward yeah. to finally being here. Hopefully this year coming back. Maybe I'll visit.、Uh, maybe I'll visit you over、uh, over there. I've never been. Welcome to China this year. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Now, Rich, have you been to China before? No, I have not. No, I haven't. All right, let's do it. I will join you as well. <laughs> We're all gonna go with the KT in their place. Um, so KT, I would love to hear more about um your company, your business, and how it works with buyers. Do you have something prepared? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, definitely. Yeah,、uh, it's a good time to、um, to, and it's also my honor to show.、Uh, I was invited to show the、um, some printing、uh, technology here, and uh, uh, for the past couple years, maybe two years, and、uh, um, there's another、uh, printing machine、uh, they call DTF. It's getting more and more popular on the garments industry. And、uh, so I want to、uh, so I want to introduce this、uh, two technology of the printing,、uh, the, the TDG. I think many guys already, many buyers already know 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 it. But I'm 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 uh, uh, demonstrate the different uh, uh, industry uh, industrial application、uh, in a garment factory.、Uh, so、um, there's a. Uh, there's a、uh, I just made a PPT to for easily、uh, for the、uh, for for our for us to understand. All right, this is the title: DGD and the, the TDF printing line demonstration. All right, and、uh, um, industrial application in a garment factory. And it will be three contents.、Uh, part one is、uh, our brief self introduction:、uh, Who am I? And、uh, um, what?、Uh, how we? How we? How can I support buyers to stay competitive in the in in, in the apparel business? So、mm-hmm. it's it's just follow the the topic you just discussing just now. So it's really 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 exciting to talk about that. And part two, it's a a, a customer case.、Um, I I made a service story, and、uh, so I can bring on the industrial DDG technology to introduce how it. How it can help on, especially the fashion、uh, area, the, the fashion era. Okay, and the past three is the DTF. DTF what is uh, uh, how 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 he can help? Why he's so popular、uh, recently and、uh, more and more popular? And、uh, we show you why how how it works. So this is the three content. 
And uh, at the brief self introduction, and uh, my name is Kev my English name is Kevin, and my my last name is Tu. So uh, the short name is KT. So you, you can easily for you to remember my my name is KT. And uh, our this is our factory, and uh, we are the nine years verified supplier. But uh, it's a family um, business actually. It's almost twenty eight years since nineteen ninety eight. Uh, from from my uncle, I take the. I take the, uh, the the management from my uncle and my uh, brother. My he's uh, basically more responsible on production, so I have more energy and more time on sales. It's also just the learning. I'll, I'll introduce later how it how it comes out. So this is just an overview. Uh, this is our workshop, and uh, we own a printing line, and we invested in bordering line. And uh, uh, we have the uh, certificate of Disney and uh, BSCI, and uh, we have the uh, the whole well, part two the two parts. One is our production capacity, uh, capacity, and one is our uh, service cap capacity. So so um, it's not easy for us because we we have been manufacturer for almost twenty years and only to start to serve. Uh, for international trade, maybe for only for eight, of, eight of, or nine years. It's not easy for us, but we, are, we are keep learning. Yeah, and also um, just to jump on, like the Disney authorized and NBA authorized licensing and vendor, that's actually quite special that, you know, usually have a lot of certificates and requirement, right? Inspection, and yeah. et cetera. Yeah, have to, have to, have to. We yeah. have to, have to be audited to, to, Mm -hmm. To manufacture for them. All right. Yeah. This is the, our main products line. Uh, the first one is the fashion brand support. This is um, especially we found uh, recently a lot of uh, retail seller from Alibaba.com, uh, such as um, I heard uh, I heard uh, Brandly uh, refer to the the Amazon seller. All right. There's also some of our customers uh, they are Amazon seller. So it's a uh, they have their own brands, and they maybe start from very small quantity. So this this is the 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 how 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 the buyers from the Alibaba.com now actually. The second one is the basic one, basic styles, the uniform, the team wear. And the third one is the sports sports fittings, and the the the, uh, the last one is uh, at the mainly uh, we do B two B actually. So we support the business. Mainly, not so so many smallers, but mm -hmm. we 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 definitely better to support local uh, wholesaler or locals local service to support the local uh, brands. It's mm -hmm. better for us to uh, hire the efficient. Okay, and actually it was lucky uh, because I just come back from uh, Las Vegas last week, and. Uh, um, yeah, it's the magic shoe. Uh, uh, just finished uh, two weeks ago, and it's been uh, three years epidemic. So it's a uh, it's another feeling. So it, it, and I'm saying just now, it's uh, uh, if you you have not come to China, and it's, it's also uh, when we visit our customer, I also uh, went to uh, Los, uh, Los Angeles, Atlanta, and New York City. So everybody excited because it's so long time we didn't meet each, each other. Yeah. So it's really good. <laughs> yes, they are also desire to want to um, uh, expand their products line. They want to develop more new items. They also want to see more uh, supplier for new business. It's because the epidemic really changed a lot, really changed a lot. But we 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 desire to um, find the opportunity to de to develop more. Mm -hmm. So it, this is our booth, and we bring the the. The uh, baseball jacket and uh, uh, baseball jersey and jacket are very popular there. And um, actually, I found it's not so many, not so many buyers there this time. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just the beginning. Maybe next uh, in summer I will be there again. Maybe another mm -hmm. year, and more and more uh, buyers come back to the business. <laughs> mm, yeah, definitely. And uh, the, uh, uh, the one one question I received a lot from the booth. From the show is oh, where, where where are you from China? No, the, sure I'm from China, right? But <laughs> where are you where are you located? Where are right? you from? <laughs> so I, I, I usually I answer the question twice, right? The second answer is Nanchang City, Nanchang City. Well, somebody just need to think. Oh, where's the Nanchang City? <laughs> All right, actually, uh, where are the 
in the middle between Shanghai and uh, Guangdong, Shanghai and Guangzhou, uh, many uh, buyers they even they went to Canton Fair, so they know uh, Guangzhou well. And uh, many uh, buyers know uh, Shanghai city as a, as a big international city. So actually, we are in the kind of middle between these cities. Uh, from each city, we take an hour flight or three hours high speed train. So it's, it's not so far, but uh, we have the advantage of the uh, labor of the labor cost and the material and the, the dying because before, as I said, at the first 20 years, we, we, um, we were mainly the manufacturer. We uh, produce garments for the chili company in Shanghai and uh, Guangzhou. But now we just start to learn the, how to service our buyers. So it's, it's, a, good, so it's a good opportunity as well. And uh, it's just the keep, uh, keep developing. Uh, 80 years, and uh, the platform is the um, online and offline platform, Alibaba and uh, Alibaba.com is the main course, all right? And now we can do the um, whole service, uh, including the shipping, the payment term, the, um, the developing things for our buyers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and uh, and we still keep improving, still keep learning, and uh, to um, increase our efficiency of communication with the buyers. So uh, we also want to know about more. So it's really exciting to, to see your guys discussing how to sort, how to find a reliable supplier, how to uh, develop more items. So mm -hmm. this can help me, can help me to understand you well. And so I can support you better and better. This is the thing. And uh, uh, we also learn a lot from our, our customers. Uh, like video show and the chat, always video video show and the chat. Uh, I test a lot of, I, 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 myself, myself to be model a lot of times, a lot of times to test the, the, the samples and the test the mask goods, ah, how it looks, how it fitting, and uh, mm -hmm. how we produce out the other uh, mask goods, all right? And also um, to display more technology, more, uh, more, more developing issues. And uh, we uh, we also noticed uh, now more and more uh, buyers they are selling online, so they request uh, faster and faster processes like sampling, like uh, uh, production, especially for the uh, Amazon because uh, they usually start from maybe 15 pieces or 100 pieces, but uh, request very really quickly repeat order, very really fast repeat order to deliver it so it can. Can uh, can keep them keep the keep their sales constantly. Mm -hmm. and I, now we understand it's so important. So we need to improve our the uh, the, the the capacity the capacity of the faster production. Hey, hey, and, KT, I have a question for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned before that you, you you do a lot of you know street wear and sports wear and and professional wear and I'm just curious for mm -hmm. like your Amazon. People who are selling on Amazon, yeah. What what's the biggest demand uh, so far this year uh, for, from those different types of apparel you're doing? Actually, it. Uh, uh, you mean the items or the 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 the, uh, the orders uh, management? Um, j just like the the people the, the for your customers who are selling on Amazon. Yeah. What are they ordering? What kind are they ordering most from you? Like what what's hot? You think for 2023 for Amazon? Uh, now, now we're getting more and more uh, like uh, uh, beach uh, beach shirts, you know, for uh, like uh, um, beach shorts, beach shirts, and uh, the uh, sublimation because sublimation is our main seriously as well. So and uh, more up for vacation. I think it's for voc vacation for holidays, uh, mm -hmm. and I think people are going to go to travel a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and this is one thing. And uh, if you if you are referring the order management. Uh, at the beginning, the, the most important is the quality. They do not want any return rate. <laughs> it's really <laughs> essential. So we have to uh, enhance our um, quality inspection team. Mm -hmm. And it definitely explains why the hotel is so expensive, right? Everybody is traveling now. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, for now, we can see that it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting more. <laughs> All right, so uh, we continue. And, and yeah, so um, 
Katie, thanks um, for explaining the working with Amazon sellers um, and social media sellers probably you offer a low MOQ to help them start the you know the first yeah, order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll explain later. I'll explain later. Just yeah. like, just like why just because just why DTF is coming out. That that's the that's the that's the last part. Excellent. Three, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is the brief introduction. So I hopefully, I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm 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 explain me career. All right. Can you um can you explain what's the DTG stand for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The DTG the full name is uh, uh directed to garments. Actually, in the first uh, uh PPT the shoes. It's okay. directed to the government. But when we say DDG here, uh, I'll explain it's the different uh, uh, with what we call um, typical traditional DDG, actually. I'll explain later. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, now, uh, as I explained what we, what we are doing now, and we do uh, more supporting to train, uh, sorry, to help to support our buyers from small to bigger. And also we support the big, buy big buyers, big uh, wholesalers with more, um, have to do more, uh, such as design, developing support. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we usually uh, introduce more garments items for them to selection as just some other uh, trend we know and from the market. So we can also, we usually also introduce to our customers. And how logo, how logo, um, uh, how logo conduct? You can see the the wall behind me. There actually a lot of different way, different way of the logo come out, and uh, uh, we usually we are advise how buyers can choose uh, um, like uh, screen printing or heat transfer printing or digital printing or embroidery uh, and uh, uh, conduct sampling for them to choose. And uh, uh, as I as I referred to just now, one more. People uh, they are sell, they say they are selling online, so they also request a higher higher level of the packaging, uh, not only the, just a normal bag, uh, but also uh, some high level brand they want to fancy packaging like a box mailbox or a printed box. Uh, this is the service we can we can uh, we can support and also the marketing support as a, uh, as we also support the local vendor. So we can do some support for them to show their customers to put their logo on all the like fabric books, like the um, logo indications. And the third one is pre-sale support. Um, actually, most people will focus on the payment term. They usually want to pay later because they need to sell, to, to sell all the goods to get the money. So we can also have the better support and the technical support, uh, so that's why I bring the DDG here. And it's already the newest, actually the latest, uh, uh, the printing, the printing uh, technology to support a better design. And when buyer requests the DDG, uh, this is the, the, this is the uh, uh, customer case, um, it's already happened. Uh, he said, uh, um, he, I, 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 uh, first of all, at the beginning, when he sent the design artwork to me, and I uh, indicated, the, I made the sample, I made the sample with the uh, slippery printing because it can be used with the uh, automatic uh, over printing machine. Oh, thank you. And uh, uh, this is the, uh, the, first of all, I conducted the screen printing. But the the buyer, this is the case from UK, a, a, a customer from UK of mine. On, uh, he said uh, on the right button is your printing, on the right is my printing, on the left is from Turkey. So I have a competitor from Turkey, but uh, he always wants to do business with me. So he asked, he tell, tell me all the information. He told me all the information. It's a proper digital printing with the same YK. By the way, but no added colors. It's not vibrant. So he he have to, he asked, uh, he told me it has to be DTG, DG, uh, DTG. But uh, um, the, the, the traditional DTG is like this small ma machine. It's like this small machine. The famous brand is the Brother and the uh, from Japan, the Ipsum. 
usually we can say from a lot of um, local printing shop, this is the, the DBG, they do small orders or, or for some re retailer serum. But for us, we definitely need a much, much higher production capacity. So the DTG, I'm, I'm referring, it's actually, we call it a hybrid digital with automatic over printing line. It includes the printer, the, the digital printer and the automatic, the automatic over printing line. Uh, anybody know this um, printing line? <laughs> everybody know this printing line? It's um, automatic, uh, very, very, very fast. Uh, that is every every day, maybe six six thousand pieces every day, all right. Oh, and the way, yeah. And um, the 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 traditional one, this one is quite slow. It's quite slow. Almost um, take three to four minutes one piece. So it, every day, just hundreds. It definitely cannot meet our requirement. So we developing new. We developing new new. Uh, Technology we combine these two machines so we can make this uh, um, uh, fancy printing and with a high speed. We can make at least uh, two thousand pieces every day with mm -hmm. one line. So I can Bye. show a video. I can show the video of the um, how it works. Awesome. Um, yeah, Jessica, could you help? No, no, not this one. Not this one. This is the DTF. Yeah. This is the DTF. Jesse is another one. Yeah, another video. Sorry, <laughs> just too many. Just too many. <laughs> so, Rich, what are you thinking? I see you're thinking. Hmm. You are printing now, so I'm gonna buy this machine. I'm gonna. <laughs> no, it's just awesome to watch. Uh, I, I know what KT is saying. But basically, like they just use a DTG, like screen printing hybrid setup. So you know, it's still just as fast as screen printing, but instead of using multiple different uh, screens for different colors, you know, we're just. Uh, pretty much the uh the pre-treatment uh, the full color print is all in one so that's pretty sick one question i did have is as far as dtf are most people ordering actual transfers itself or the end product sorry uh, like when it comes to dtf like are most people ordering the dtf transfers or are they ordering like the end product yes yes uh, dtf is for transferring it's for transferring yeah, but are most customers ordering the actual transfers or are they ordering like an end product like printed with the DTF? Uh, DTF, they, uh, we usually do two kinds of business. Uh, the many now we provide the blank, the blank uh, um, garments like t-shirts or the, or, or the hoodies, something, and they can do DTF by, by themselves if they are the local printing shop because it's easy for them to make this film. They just need a blank one to uh, make out the the the, the uh, to print out. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some of them are just ordering transfers so that they can press it themselves. Yes. 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 And uh, but they order the blank uh, garments from us. Oh, the blanks too. Okay. Yes. 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 All right, Jess, could you show the video? I'm not sure. Yes, it's coming up. Yep. Um, while we're waiting. Um, uh, uh, we have a lot of audience um, asking where to find your store, so we'll drop the link in the comment. Sorry, excuse me. Oh, the video. You want to play it again, Jess? Okay. A little stuck there. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. So. The audience asking your um, store, so we would drop your website on the on the in the comments. Job uh, site. No, the um, your website. We will mm -hmm. leave your website in the comment because our audience is asking. Okay, okay, sorry, I asked my <laughs> colleague to follow. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll watch the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. That's okay. So start there. You can see it's actually the print works. Uh, they have the um, white white ink first, and then print the image mm -hmm. on the white uh, ink, and then to dry it. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a D, uh, DTG directed to garment, mm -hmm. and I explain why why this uh, uh, technique is developing. 
because uh, why people choose this uh, technology to print out their design. All right, the uh, video don't work, maybe. Yeah. So anyway, I, um, we, we're back to PPT first. And uh, I'm, I'm explaining why. Mm -hmm. I'm explaining why. Wow. This is the this is the math schools we are doing for mm -hmm. our customer, right? This already finished. The order already finished, and uh, we can see there's so many different colors. So many different colors. If we do traditional screen printing, uh, it will be cause the problem of the different layers. If you know the screen printing, it will be the the difference between like such as the the uh, white one, the white one, and the purple one, and some yellow one, some yellow one, it will not be so full image, and it will be mass. I can show you another example. For example, this is the, this is the last order, the last, last order, actually. You can see, you can see the red one covered the yellow one. So, it's a use the DDG can show the whole the whole image with the full full fusion full image fusion. So it's the pixel level. I marked on it in, in yellow color. All right, and uh, th and uh, th so uh, so the so the uh, DDG is getting more and more popular, and uh, this uh, this uh, item. We also facing another two challenge. One is because there's a pocket here, and the printing is over across the pocket. Across the pocket, the, tra the traditional machine cannot solve it. So it have to be the new technology to cross the pocket because the sprayer over the different height will up to at least three mm. Hopefully, um, you can understand this. <laughs> this is uh, just a technology, actually. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. uh, second one is the washing effect because it has to be uh, stable after stone wash. All right. I, 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 I'll make this fast, quickly. Okay. Just to explain you. This is how why it's getting more and more popular, especially for the wear. Mm -hmm. The 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 if uh, any buyer. Uh, Want to develop him better studio This is big, big image printing. Mm -hmm. Use this new technology will be definitely uh, enhance the, the whole the whole product. And I, I will show you. And uh, the our customer, our buyers love it, and the, their faith, their fans love it. Mm -hmm. All right, I can show the the next one. There's a so Katie. Um, someone asked, uh, what kind of materials do you use? for the printing to have a good um, look? Uh, the, material, the, the material of this uh, um, hoodie is the 100% cotton, uh, okay. 480 gram uh, uh, Cygnus uh, GSM. It's very heavy and um, very, uh, it's very popular in UK actually. And uh, you can see the sales, congratulations, congratulations for the big sale. The pre-sale sold out 70 minutes for 7,171 pieces, all right? And the official sale is uh, December. Uh, we sell uh, 20,000, 20, sorry, 20,000 pieces in total in one day. And uh, also another job. And uh, uh, this is what I test. This is uh, on, on me. I test, I, I was modeling for them. And uh, this is the bias. This is the fans. This is the fans. Um, they post their their hoodies on in uh, Instagram. Uh, all the fans love it. So this is the example how this uh, be more and more popular. Mm -hmm. This is the case. I hopefully uh, is you have have any question on the on this case? <laughs> Looks pretty good. Thank you. And that, that's the that's the that's why we can support our buyers. Uh, we we grow up with them together. They also they are they start from five hundred pieces actually. But 
but uh, the the biggest order they pay us to me is over 100 mi oh, sorry 1 million dollar 90,000 pieces of food is and they sell very well mm -hmm. and you also have something um, you want to show us putting a logo yeah 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 now yeah. it's the DTF printing tour all right okay this is the this is the last part and uh, uh, the DTF it means actually it's the uh, directed to film so it is come to it's come to a, a, a special film. Now, I just please have to turn on the camera of my colleague in the workshop now, yeah. The process is around the full. Print out on the film. Uh, uh, oh, I just received the artwork from uh, Shanana, and mm -hmm. uh, your logo is already in, in our computer. So he's uh, cheating, the, cheating the, the, your artwork first, so your logo, and then, put on the printer to print out to, onto the film, all right? Just <laughs> hang on <laughs> your logo. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. While we're waiting, um, so Kevin will get a lot of questions for you also. Yeah. Uh, while people are asking yeah, I need to, yeah. Yeah, I need to tell on my, my TM, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, while we're waiting and see how you print this logo, um, someone asked, um, can you print CTG all over print? Like the garment is covered in print 100%. Can you print DTG on top of that? Yeah, if it's flat enough, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's a, that's a, good, que that's a good question. Um, another one is um, a normally all over print has a high MOQ. So um, the, the audience is wondering if you can do it with a low MOQ using DTG. Yeah, DTG and DTF solve the MOQ issues. It's okay. Actually, can, yeah, it's actually start from hundreds. Per design. Oh, hundreds? Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. This is your logo, Chanel, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we need to um, authorize us to print it for the showcase. <laughs> awesome. And also someone shout out to um, Kevin, KT, yeah. and thank you for joining us. It's so early. And someone's also sh shouting out to Rich. What's it's up, my, Rich? <laughs> it's my pressure. <laughs> and you guys, yeah, because Rich. Yeah, if, 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 we, we, are, we are now, we are getting more and more advantage to support the new brand. Mm -hmm. New brand. We call, we call, the, uh, we call the, uh, us uh, brand builder. <laughs> we support the brands from new to being bigger and, yeah, uh, uh, and we, we encourage your uh, local vendor you mm -hmm. can contact contact with your local influencer if mm -hmm. he has uh, um, fans enough maybe even uh, like 1,000 10,000 fans mm -hmm. can make a lot of money from that and the uh, fans will love it Fans yeah. because fans fans buy it because he, he they have the face on their mm -hmm. on on their um influencer they, they, they love it actually we can say a lot of uh, I usually say a lot of um uh, feedback from on Twitter and Instagram they just love it and they just love the poll and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they are they are also proud of from of them <laughs> yeah. And we get like another fan just call out to Rich. You need to send out free t-shirts for the audience. Who will <laughs> the best. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, All right, he's still the always I ask him to be quicker. Maybe he's not uh, <laughs> <laughs> weak enough. <laughs> We're ready. Yeah, it's uh, now. It's uh, okay. It turn on the printer machine. So now it's print. Awesome. The sprayer is working. Now this one is for only for sampling two heads. Uh, one is a white ink. One another one is colorful ink. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we have a faster machine, four heads, eight heads to make more film. Wow, it's cool. And I love love it. You always help the buyers get the best results. Um, you you help them understand what they need and then give them recommendations. That's super helpful for the buyers. Yeah, we just realized maybe maybe also in China, also maybe the all, all over the world, um, the young people, especially the young people, they would mm -hmm. love to buy uh, garments online more than mm -hmm. 
they go to uh, like a super, supermarkets, maybe like a, a Walmart or Mercy's. I, I just, I'm just, it's, it's getting to us more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this is two, oh, wow. two pieces in one. So there, there's a special film on the bottom. So the spray, just spray the image on the film directly. So it's called DTF. And uh, covered with a wide wing. And then come with the, um, the, uh, the, the glue powder. So after the transfer, it, it goes to on um, T-shirt. This is uh, um, really good for, um, just can you help, help to back to the, to the, to my PPT. So what can, I can explain. Yeah, I, I, I can explain. Uh, the TDF is many more advantage to help faster sampling because before, if we do, uh, if we make sample with screen printing, we need to make a film, we need to make it mold. It will usually take uh, at least uh, two or three days. And uh, and uh, uh, and uh, prepare the ink, mm -hmm. uh, find, the, find the right color. And usually we adjust to the pendant color. But with the TDF, we only do 10 minutes. So this is the very mm -hmm. different. Yeah. All right. Um, it's, um, an audience asking, do you also make the fabric too, right? So you you make the fabric, the clothes, and also print on this. So this whole one-stop shop. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The, the fabric, uh, uh, Nantan City is the whole, is actually the whole, the, the complete uh, mm -hmm. industry for the garments, for the knitting garments, mainly, mm -hmm. for the knitting garments. Uh, yarn, and then knitting and mm -hmm. dyeing, mm -hmm. and then to the fabric is the, the yeah. whole process yeah and yeah, also yeah. you're in the industry belt for this garment and fabric and apparel so that's a very strong supply chain behind you as well yes yes because uh, um the industry here is uh, yeah mm -hmm. it's quite strong yeah not for all fabric because um uh, we have to be more uh, professional or mm -hmm. on, uh, have advantage for some for some Fabric, actually now more and more cotton fabric already go to Bangladesh. Actually, mm -hmm. um, do you also print on bags, cotton bags, or just on apparel? Uh, no, we we can print on the bags, but we do not produce bags. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, but the, you can like they can send over the bags from a different factory for you to print on this, right? Sure, 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 sure. Cool. This uh, DTF can be on on backs, on uh, marks even. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, this is uh, this this uh, this uh, the former one is just for sampling, and uh, the 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 behind one is uh, just to make it uh, move smoothly. That's awesome. Looks great. And this is actually really convenient. It just the customers can send you the file and digitally, and then you can print right away. It's just yeah. print on demand. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, it's actually not uh, not uh, different as as the formal heat transfer. It's mm -hmm. much so softer. It's much softer and breathable. It's before the the heat transfer printing is really uncomfortable, but now. Now the DTF is actually very soft. You can you can see. Excellent. We can we also do these things for our customer. <laughs> you can put your logo here, and we can help oh, wow. you to your customers. Oh my goodness! <laughs> the <laughs> the customers can outsource a lot of work to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not just the manufacturing printing; they can actually help. You can help them do the marketing material. Yes, yes, we do marketing support. Oh, it's really good to hear. You know, sometimes buyers don't realize they can 
they can get your help on things that usually take lots of effort and, and money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, we also sometimes because uh, um, our customers sell online, we also uh, took take photos of the products for them in China because it's much cheaper <laughs> here. Oh wow! Oh my goodness! <laughs> and take photos and maybe do yeah. some graphic design for them, getting product ready. And also, you work with licensed products, and so you have all the. Um, process for inspections for Disney and NBA and all this, you know, licensed products as well. And I know that's really painful sometimes for inspections. So yeah, that's awesome to know. Yeah, because uh, there's a customer in uh, Canada, they, they, all of their sales are sitting online. Um, they are so busy and uh, they um, are too busy to arrange the taking photos so uh, one time i noticed that the, the photos on uh, their city now not so good i mm-hmm. I, I think is they just uh, took the photos mm-hmm. so rashly so we provided <laughs> we provided the photos uh, we arranged the photos here in china and uh, and it's cheaper and faster and oh, then wow. they, are, they just love it and it's much more clean <laughs> that's excellent yeah i can see this machine is you know watching this Making and printing process just make you so relaxed. It just so <laughs> plays all day long. It's so just for sampling, but actually, when the mass production is like five, it's like five. Yeah, it's like more. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. always need to be yeah. quickly. <laughs> because when now, we live stream the yeah. machine. Because in, yeah, because in, at this moment, they only have this this one job, you know, this only this one job. It doesn't, yeah. Now it's two and a half o'clock. Yeah. After, after, after eight o'clock, they have to be work more <laughs> harder. Um, yeah, we, you know, sometimes it's not, we don't see all the behind the scenes. I, you know, I know it's a lot of work and effort putting into that and, you know, getting on, on the show and it's, a, we really appreciate it. Um, but just the machine itself, watching that, we should just live stream that 24 seven for people who work <laughs> in the fashion or e-commerce space, it's just so stressful, right? Really, yeah. you know. <laughs> especially especially when our customer, when, when the buyer told me, all right, the pre-sale day is, is set down. The official sale, uh, sale day is, is, uh, is done. Mm-hmm. And we also do the, you know, we also do the DDP, uh, DDP shipping. We also arrange shipment to the warehouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so the timing schedule, wow, it's really, really, really uh, anxiety. Nice. Many, yeah, the, the whole, you know, it, it influences hundreds, hundreds of workers in our factory. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, we have another question for you, um, Katie. So, yeah. what is the sh- uh, shipping time usually like when once the product's done um, and then shipped to US warehouse? How long is the shipping today? Uh, usually, uh, uh, now we, we request ourselves, we have a target to do the uh, samples within three days. And the mass production for, um, for, for, for this kind is very quickly. For usually, uh, for hundreds of pieces, we manage to finish like uh, within two weeks or two weeks, around mm-hmm. two weeks. And uh, one week for delivery. This is for small order, mm-hmm. and for big order, uh, such as uh, ten thousand pieces, with DTG, and uh, we manage to uh, finish the production within one month, twenty five days, twenty five days, and then one week to the uh, to do the other customs waiting for the. Uh, Vessels and the fast shipping to Los Angeles is another 12 days. So basically, to US should be within two months, around 50 days ship, uh, by, by sea. If by air, it's three weeks. Am okay. I clear? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, you know, depends on the time, right? Sometimes shipping can take longer. So for the buyers and audience, make sure you communicate with, with supplier like KT and have that, um, you know, it's not always the same, right? Make sure you talk to suppliers um, and get the accurate expectation. expectation. Because sometimes yeah, this, year, forever, yeah, yeah. this year will be better. Last mm-hmm. year, la- last, last year is a disa- was a disaster of shipping. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. 
And, um, you know, I work with a lot of buyers who kind of set up the expectations wrong and they kind of um, always in a hurry to, to do things that have to use air freight and they have to um, change their plan. So, um, yes, definitely. That's the glue powder. That's the glue powder. So mm -hmm. to cover the white ink. Oh, wow. So the, yeah, the, the, the film will have the glue on, on it. And then by heat transfer to the T-shirts. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Just okay. I ask them to be faster. <laughs> <laughs> no worry. While we while we're waiting, we can go through some of the questions Q and A section. Okay. Um. Yeah. This. You know. This is, so someone's asking. Just want to make sure I get this question correctly. Is DTF for active appeals, or I don't know if it's active apparels. It's for peer. Yeah. For peer oh, after okay. trying to appear off. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's the DTF for active appeals, right? Hmm, I'm not sure what the meaning of the appeals. What it, I think sure. they mean an active apparel. Like DTF is usually you can usually apply it to most most garments. Mm -hmm. I think most yeah. uh, most transfers they used to think like you can only apply it to 100% cotton, but they're probably asking if they can apply it to spandex or polyester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a workbook. Yeah. yeah. It's a work yeah, that definitely makes sense. Thanks. Um, it's good to have. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> it's very uh, technical. Um, so, um, yeah, I think you mentioned it, but uh, someone's also asking what is the quantity requirement and MLQ, and you mentioned a few hundreds for DTF, right? Okay. What about the, the other method? What is the MLQ? It's the same. Uh, uh, basically, if if uh, the buyers um, assign the color, mm -hmm. the color of the garments, such as you know, um, uh, except of, except the white and the black, such as the green, navy, uh, the popular color, it will request the uh, MOQ on dyeing. The okay. dyeing, the dyeing, the fabric at least uh, um, usually like five hundred kg. Okay. Kilogram. So uh, usually the quantity for the um, t-shirt would be 1,200. Mm -hmm. For hoodies, uh, at least uh, 800 pieces. All right. If you can accept our blank uh, uh, inventory, a uh, stock one, because we have also a lot of stock uh, items and uh, we do higher level of the um, stock, uh, the blank uh, garments, mm -hmm. it, it does no, no, no MOQ actually. Okay. Oh, wow. That's really good to know. Something already ready to go. Yeah. Um, so as, uh, audience is asking for, uh, I think it's for us, um, uh, where this recording will be. So we will have a recording. We'll post it on our website, um, on alibaba.com and also on social media. So definitely uh, we will um, keep in touch and follow our social media and you will see the recording. Um, and someone thank oh, you. Okay, we also we also provide the um, the footage, the video footage to our buyers. Okay. They okay. usually yeah, they usually love to share the production process mm -hmm. of their products on, uh, on on their account, so their fans can see ah how these products come out came yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, and you can also just call KT through the chatting function. He's available 24 seven for all buyers. <laughs> <It's> all <right. laughs> like, yeah, you know, it just coordinate the time. No, no worry. Yeah. No worry. Now, yeah. The, the most difficult thing is uh, I look at the in that time, it's difficult for me to hire and train sales girls, you know, the merchandise girls. Mm -hmm. It's not easy as uh, in Shanghai and uh, Guangzhou. Yeah. Because uh, you know, um, we, our city is not a big city as mm -hmm. the Shanghai city. Yeah, don't worry. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's, but we have a team now. We have a team now, but yeah. they're just getting busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, so this is the question I think for our um, guest speakers. Um, how do you kind of set your quality standards? Because I don't think there's any like industry code for quality, right? So there are people looking for like premium quality for higher price and people looking for more kind of fast fashion, maybe more be cost efficient, but you know, it's very different. So how do you usually kind of set your standard for quality and how do you 
make sure the supplier can uh, meet your standard. Yeah, uh, it's usually uh, we distinguish with uh, um, what is the purpose of the garment. If it's mm -hmm. the brand, if it's the fashion brand, the only standard is if I if I if I were the um, consumer, would I buy it? My, from you, know, I, if I, I can, I would pay with my car. That is the standard. Mm -hmm. So this is for retail city, for retail sale. Mm -hmm. But we also do a lot of um, team wear, team wear for some events or for some uh, some some club. They mm -hmm. just want some some customer, some buyers just want a cheaper one, just mm -hmm. want a cheaper one, lower price. You uh, basically um, we do not do the cheapest. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, garments. There's um, at least we we don't want any complaint. We don't want any uh, any 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 products returned. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I so, I hundred percent because I yeah. uh, I know a buyer who is selling uniforms for boys clubs and sports good. And wow, let me tell you, those boys just they don't want like a, they need high quality that can just being tortured and all, you know, this clothes. So yeah, they definitely are looking for high quality as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, so, um, so reach and, and reach, how, how do you usually set your stand, standard for the product quality? Like how do you, like, there's no industry standard, right? You just have to make your own standard. Yeah, well, now it's more known. It's a more known thing from the consumer base. It's like how thick is the weight of the actual garment. So GSMs has been like a, a big, mm -hmm. like popular thing lately. I know KT was talking about like 400 GSMs. Like now, mo mm -hmm. most customers in the U.S. don't really know the difference between like a 320 and a 400. But like a 320 mm -hmm. is like a real nice thick weave. And even in in the athletic department, like most people want their jerseys to last for a long time. So now they're asking for a thicker GSM for polyester as well. So ju just just letting them know how like tightness the weave is is like how how much they think the quality and how long the actual garment will last them that's awesome that's really good to know so that's a, a good answer um for our audience that's a quality standard codes um and um and chanel do you have any like like a standard how you choose the quality let me unmute myself um so not really for um yeah, I would say it's just a matter of getting the the samples, right? Getting the samples, mm -hmm. having models try them on, uh, putting it through the wash, and then dealing with a manufacturer that has their, their own quality assurance, right? So mm -hmm. they do certain tests on the, the products and everything that they sell. But mm -hmm. um, doing both of those and just being my own customer, I know what quality my customer is looking for, and I know how much they're willing to pay for it. Um, and mm -hmm. then sometimes it's a trade-off if a certain quality costs yeah. a certain amount. Can we can we lower it a little bit to make this a little bit more affordable, but it's still a good quality, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of knowing your customer, knowing um, what they're looking for, what's most important to them, mm -hmm. um, and how much are they willing to to pay for that? Yep. Sounds good. Yeah, definitely. I think those are great answers. Um, I combine both um, feedback um, and also a uh, KT. Um, you are um, like you are the second generation of this business, right? Yeah, you have been yes, yes. for a long time, and I think you have been on Alibaba for eight years. You mentioned so how so how did you guys evolve over the eight years? There must be a lot of changes. Um, it was like a traditional kind of business, right? Now it's all digital e-commerce. So how did you develop your manufacturing kind of capacity and solution service? In the past few years, I would love to hear. No, oh, it's it's really difficult actually. It's really <laughs> difficult. It's not easy, you know, because you know before we are um, now you, you uh, I, I I need to explain to you the um the label the label uh, situation in China now. Uh, the one thing is uh, usually the, uh, when uh, when I manage the um the factory the the the, the production, the most difficult is the workers. All right, the workers you. Uh, Always want to, you know, just uh, work in there, see in the machine, all right? Just, uh, just uh, operate the machine, no stop, all right? They, they hate small orders. They hate the small quantity. They really hate the small quantity because if you change, if the small quantity, if it's different the color, they have to change the shreds. They have to change the shreds every, uh, maybe something already on the machine, maybe just a few hundreds. When he already get, to, get, get used to that, he have to, she have to change it. 
So it's really difficult to to manage them. And uh, uh, before uh, the only the only uh, the only way to calculate their salary is by pieces. All right, counted by pieces. How many pieces is they sell? So how much sal salary they, they can get? All right. And uh, uh, if we slow down their movement, their, their, their income will slow down. So they really hate it. Okay. Uh, this is the one thing. And the second thing is I need to support from the uh, all accelerators and the subcontractors as well, uh, like, like the dime. Okay. Before we die every order, like 10,000. 10, 20,000 pieces, one color, all right? Now I, now I ask them to bring more small hoops for small orders, for small quantities. And the process is the same. The process between the big order and the small order is the same, all right? This is, so I also need to get support from all the subcontractors. The third one is uh, um, actually I have no energy. And I have no uh, team at, for, at the beginning to manage how to. Okay, you just now, as I said, it is interest, interesting to me. We are discussing how to sourcing a supplier. And at the beginning, we are learning, we, are, we, are, we work so hard to learn how to show us on Alibaba.com. It's the same thing. I need to learn how Alibaba works, mm -hmm. how, uh, what's the uh, bio for the thinking, and mm -hmm. how it's going on. So, it's kind of really difficult at the beginning, mm -hmm. all right. So we think we make the way. We think about we think about it now. Still, uh, in our cities, there are a lot of factories, and now they already get the film. Uh, Shanana, you, you can see your mm -hmm. logo on the on the film already. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's his um is the sister. Okay, all right, and uh, um, so uh, I have to. Uh, spare myself from the production management firstly. Mm -hmm. So I learn, I learn, I learn how to um, post the uh, products on Alibaba first. All right, I learn and how I learn the the, the rules of the um, website, the uh, order way, or the uh, mind of the uh, e-commerce. I learn first, and then depart myself to each part. Okay, now you know. Okay, uh, now I change somebody to. Okay, now they use a heat transfer machine mm -hmm. to put the film. This is the black one, so I think it's to use the white one first. <laughs> no, it's good. We are all black today, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the most right. mock up is the black is on the white t shirt. <laughs> all right, so I depart myself to several parts. All right. Uh, when I learned uh, how to um, operate a, a store on Alibaba, I teach a girl like Cora. Okay, Cora is my colleague. Uh, okay, how to post a pro pro product, how to um, to advertise our products, how to buy the key words to show ourselves. Okay, and then uh, I get a sales girl, and I teach. I taught. I taught her how to communicate with the buyers. How how they could thinking, all right, and then I I trained the uh, our merchandiser how to follow up, how to do the order management, how to control the quality and the delivery time. <laughs> so wow. it's kind of these things. It's actually take wow. a long time. <laughs> wow, yeah, there's really a lot of that. yeah. You know that just sounds like us, right? We all it's it's like a learning. All the speakers today, they have shared their learning experience as well. Um, yeah, it's well, all about learning. Like yeah, high Amazon. <laughs> yeah, but I love it. I can I can keep my keep me, myself young. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm younger than my I'm young. Uh, I'm older, slow, much slower than my uncles. I think they because they uh, uh, manage a factory too much, so they older faster than me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think we're getting wow. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, you can see this is the. That was great. 10, 15, I think fifteen minutes, right? Fifteen minutes because yeah. the first yeah. need to warm That's the awesome. machine. Yeah. Well, we'll arrange. Um, we'll arrange to ship it to you, Chanel. Yeah, okay. I just ship it now. You can just yeah. uh, just uh, send your address. I, I I send to you now. Maybe That's after three days, you get it on Monday. You get it on Monday. Not, the only thing between us is the is the shipping. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, definitely, Chanel. We'll arrange it. I will send it to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I 
Oh, it's cute. It's really nice. Thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, on white, on, on uh, mm -hmm. white on black T-shirt. Mm -hmm. So usually we all provide more options for mm -hmm. our buyers, and mm -hmm. also we prepare the um, sports one and the hoodies. I can mm -hmm. also ship you together. So maybe you need to order the sports T-shirts and the hoodies. Well, yeah. So Bradley is a is a Dodgers fan, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> so we can send you some logos. <laughs> but Sorry. It's, it's all, it's, production uh, is boring, you know. It's it's actually. <laughs> yeah, we sometimes for you maybe it's, for yeah. you maybe it's boring, but for us it's regular. <laughs> yeah. It's regular. No, yeah, we cannot print those, um, but we can print like a Bradley or something from Hamilton. So anyway. We appreciate it, KT. It was a really, really interesting. And thanks for joining us again at so early. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of questions to come into you. We'll have people. Um, so for the audience, please click on the link in the comment um, so you can go directly to the store. And if you have any inquiries, questions, just send over through the messaging on Alibaba.com and Katie will have the people respond to you ASAP. Yeah, 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 this is yeah. all the printing or do you have anything more that that's it? That that's it, right? Or yeah, and there's uh, maybe next time I show another logo indication. There's so many. We have so many. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so definitely. Many different ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds good. Well, for the time being, we're gonna just you know end the show. Um, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you soon, Katie. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a day. Bye. Bye. Um, good night. Good night. I'm going to sleep now. <laughs> You're 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 so charismatic. You should have a show or something like the pain point of working with Alibaba buyers or something. You know that's gonna be interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. No <laughs> problem. Right. Bye. So that's the sports sports teacher. I also ship to you. Okay. Okay. Sports one. The hoodies. <laughs> All right. So we have been through the Q and A section. Oh, this yellow one looks pretty good too. Mm -hmm. I like yeah, this that. This is a uh, running T-shirt. Oh wow! Oh, I can see that. See the elastic. Awesome. Well, she's not gonna wear that to um, her yoga class next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we we are going to um, the bottom of the hour, and we're ending the show very soon. And um, again, this is a March Expo opening day. Um, and feel free to click the link and check out what we're offering today. We have million of new products uh, showing. Um, and also, before I end the show, I'd love for each speaker to give one final advice for our audience. So uh, shall we start with Bradley? So one final advice for our small business owners or Amazon sellers, you know, one advice. Well, just, um, you know, the advice is, is that <clears throat> even if you do all of the right things, you know, a lot of the things we talked about today, a lot of the things the other panelists talked about today, there's still no guarantee for success. You know, like you could still have a product that fails. Uh, you could lose money. But the, you know, the, the kind of like persona of the, the people who win in the long game are the people who don't give up. So it's like, hey, follow the data, like we said today, do all the right things, but understand that sometimes it might not work out as well as you thought, even if you did all the right things, but just have that, that drive to keep going um, and just, you know, keep, keep taking in knowledge, you know, uh, you know, uh, Rich here has a YouTube channel and you know, there's podcasts out there. I just, feel, I just recorded one with men. Uh, you guys can check it out. Serious sellers podcast. You can learn all about how um, wild animals were attacking men's uh, pets before. So, so just check that episode out from this weekend. Um, yeah. But but podcasts, YouTube, I mean, there's so much free information out there for whatever, you know, whether you're into Amazon, obviously you would go to my podcast. If you're into apparel, you go to Rich's YouTube channel. There's, there's podcasts, there's YouTube channels, there's Instagram, there's TikTok, there's everything out there. So make sure to take in the knowledge, but don't get analysis paralysis yeah. where you just don't do anything with this knowledge. Just act on it. And yeah, that's my advice for everybody. Yeah, thank you so much. And what uh, what if our audience want to follow you? Uh, what is your handle on social media? And also the Helium 10 site, is there like a code or anything? Yeah, so so you, you can um you can follow me. Um the Instagram I use is just the for the podcast, it's serious sellers podcast. Um, and so you can follow me there on Instagram and message me there as well. And then if people are interested to learn how to sell on Amazon or you're already selling on Amazon, just go to Helium 10. 
com, and you can sign up for a free account. And if you want to get to one of the regular, um, one of the regular accounts, just use the code uh, SSP10, SSP10, and that'll save you guys. Uh, that'll be a special code for the listeners today. Thank you so much. And we'll also drop um, uh, Bradley's social media links in the comment as well. Thank you, Bradley. Um, and then um, Chanel, final advice for our audience. Um, so my final piece of advice would be, so today we walk you guys through how to source products on Alibaba, how to find winning products, right? Good products for your stores. So the amount of time and effort you put into finding these winning products make sure you put the same amount of time and effort into marketing those products, right? Because winning products, they won't serve you um, any purpose, the best products if no one knows about them, right? So if you need to learn ads, if you need to learn how to work with influencers, whatever you need to do to get exposure for your brand so that people can actually buy your winning products. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, how can our audience <coughs> follow you on your social media or website? Um, sure. So on Instagram, I'm just uh, the Millionaire Moms Club. And then my website is the same exact thing. It's the Millionaire Moms Club dot net. Sounds good. I would definitely take your lessons too. Um, try to be a Thank millionaire. You. Um, so we also drop the links in the comments. And finally, um, Rich, final advice. Uh, for sure. So I love what Bradley said. He said analysis paralysis. I used to not even know what that meant. Like I used to have my own coin term. I used to call it startup anxiety. It's like whenever you go on the internet, you seek for information and you kind of get overwhelmed by everything. You want everything to be so perfect whenever you first start that you don't even start because you're scared of, of making mistakes. So the, the, the most important thing is starting and then polishing it off. Like with, with the questions that you, that you, that may happen along your journey instead of going on the internet and and searching for answers for questions that you may not even have yet so that that was an important step for me was just like going ahead and launching and making those initial mistakes of course you're going to lose money along the way of course like you know everything has a risk to it but you know if you don't learn from those risks then you won't even be able to go to step ahead so just just being able to make those few steps and understanding that you you make mistakes, then you have data to correct from that point. You can't just go out and win from the very beginning. Excellent. Excellent advice. So how can we, our audience follow you with your social media? Uh, so you can follow me on Instagram as rich underscore Kun, K-H-U-N. And then you can follow me on YouTube at Hustle Ninjas. Excellent. Well, click on those links in the comments. Wow. Well, this is the end of today's event. It's super exciting. And thank you so much for joining me today. Um, today is the opening day of March Expo, and hopefully everybody can find some inspiration on Alibaba.com. Well, thank you for your time, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.